This is my hobby. The greatest hobby. Hobbyist here, we are back at it again with our Talisman Character Exploration Guide. Now previously we have concluded the teleporting laywalker, and kind of how dangerous he can be with his teleportation. And we've only got two characters left inside of the Woodlands expansion. So let's go ahead and get on to this next character. So the next character that we're going to be covering is a fearless explorer, an intrepid adventurer, who prefers the freedom of the wilds to the stuffy indulgences of city folk. This is the Scout. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Scout's character card, just to see what kind of character that we're getting ourselves into. So the Scout has a strength of three and a craft of three, which is pretty balanced, much to the same regard as the Totem Warrior. And as we can see, he's also got this tree logo. So any characters or anything that are a part of the Woodland expansion are going to bear this expansion logo. So if you're not particularly interested in playing with the Woodlands, then being able to look out for that logo will most definitely make things easier for you when it comes to separating it off. But moving forward, we can see that the Scout has a fate value of three. He's got a life of four. He is a good character when he starts the crags. Now, from a position standpoint, we can see that he is the furthest away from the woodlands, as the woodlands is on the far opposite side of where the village is. Which honestly, it just kind of sucks in that regard. You gotta be so far away from the one corner that can potentially give you the best permanent boost in the entirety of Talisman. But, I want to say that these five character abilities will certainly make up for this lack of position. So the first ability, at the top here, says you begin the game with five hidden path tokens on your character card. Now, like I've said in previous videos, Every single character inside the Woodland expansion was going to have their own set of tokens that represent their skill set. And this is a hidden path token. So, we've got all five right there on our character card. And this sets up our starting position. Now, one more thing that I almost forgot to mention is the fact that the Scout has only three fate as a value. So, with this being the case, the Scout can only be light bound or dark bound. And it is entirely up to you which side of fate alignment that you decide to commit to. And it also can determine how easy or how difficult it can be to operate inside of the Woodlands region. But moving forward, what exactly do these hidden path tokens enable for the scout? Well, whenever you draw an enemy, stranger, or place, you may place one of your hidden path tokens from your character card onto that card. If you do so, draw one extra card and add it to your space. Okay? So this definitely brings out some curiosity. When you're putting enemies, strangers, or places, if you remember from our base game tutorial, are three of the five or six different adventure card types, both inside of just this base game and the position that we're currently at, and it also applies to the woodland region on the opposite side. So, being able to draw one extra card could be nice, but then again, it could also prove to be the most dangerous. Remember that any characters that are pulling additional cards may also risk pulling more than one enemy that is very difficult. Or, especially inside the woodlands, pulling the kinds of enemies or objects or places to where a entire shift could change to where fate alignment might come into play or 
There might be cards, like there are the woodlands, that can shape the entirety of the alternate endings, whatever conditions that you may be playing as, you might be rip taking that card out and replacing it with an entirely brand new alternate ending. Or it could even change your character entirely, where you're not even playing as the scout for three turns. So that is definitely something else to take into consideration. That there's always going to be some risk with drawing an extra card, but there could also be reward in finding more objects that you can be able to take for yourself. So, this third character ability states that you may choose not to encounter cards with hidden path tokens on them. Other characters cannot encounter cards with hidden path tokens on them. They still count as basic cards in that space. A card with a hidden path token is removed from its base, return that token to your character card. So, essentially, with these five hidden path tokens, you give yourself the ability to automatically evade anything that may be too dangerous or too game-changing for you. So, any enemies that might be too strong inside of the dungeon, the dragon, or the harbinger expansion, as long as you have these hidden path tokens, you can essentially avoid them. But at the same time, if you're having someone who's being lucky with their rolls and is accumulating a lot of objects, let's say that the scout was a character that you spawned with, and you know that there's a particular area where there is one particular object that you for sure do not want any characters to be able to pick up, so that way you can return to it and pick it up for yourself. Well hidden path tokens enable you to do such a thing to where you can essentially reserve various adventure cards in order to make it so that you can pick them up instead of anybody else and this exclusive ability that the scout has can prove very fruitful remember you're blocking off anybody else from being able to use it so that is most certainly a plus when it comes to the scout. Well, let's go ahead and move on to the next two character abilities, as these two more so tie into the scout itself, and less with what the hidden path tokens can do. Next one says, when you roll the die for movement, you may add one to the result. So, sometimes whenever it comes to rolling, whether it be for trying to reach the meeting with destiny space or reach specific locations, you're going to have characters who may or may not use dark fate and force a reroll. Well, with this add one ability, you could potentially avoid the consequences of this dark fate reroll. Because let's say you rolled a six and you decided to move those move the seven spaces then somebody forces a dark fate reroll and maybe you roll a five the next time well you could still potentially take advantage of that six movement or any particular movement to where if you're rolling higher than what you need to and they force you to reroll lower then you might be able to get that one extra step towards avoiding a specific danger, or one more step towards reaching an object. Inside the actual woodland region, this might be the difference in stepping on the right spaces, or it could be the difference in reaching the meeting with destiny space quicker, because you're able to just get that one little bit of extra in order to be able to get what you need to do in order to resolve the path cards and to get the destiny that you need. And then this last character ability honestly just nullifies the need of one of the base game followers and it says you need not roll the die you need not roll the die in the chasm, crags, or forest unless you wish to. You choose to roll you must accept the result. Inside of the base game alone, the forest and the crags are two locations in which you could possibly be building up strength and craft. 
as long as you're rolling sixes. So maybe being able to take chances in those various locations might be able to prove useful to you. And the reason that I said that the ability that I had just read eliminates the need for a particular follower is because the guide in the base game has this exact ability. But with the scout, you don't really need him. You can kind of use him more so as Vampire's Tower of Fate and essentially use him to kill him off just as an extra body. So, well, the things that we learned about the Hidden Path tokens, the Hidden Path tokens reserve specific items that you may have lost or that are just out and about that you don't want other people to go out. Or, if we're thinking even bigger picture, let's say that we wanted to go after specific enemies later because we weren't strong enough or to take on the dragon the moon. Be able to complete the dragon bounty inside the city expansion or an elemental that was too crafty. So we can use these path tokens in order to save those enemies for later. Maybe we can come back and then we can beat them with any objects that we collect along the way. So the scout's ability with mobility is definitely something that's on the strong point. But what do I think of the scout overall? Honestly, just because of the way that his stats are built, it's very, very difficult to be able to anticipate whether or not it would prove useful to use a hidden path token. Because like I said, once you put those hidden path tokens on whatever enemies or certain adventure cards, you can't get them back unless you beat the things or take the objects that you put the hidden path cards on. So you could leave yourself vulnerable to any other enemy types, especially with the Harbinger cards, the Dungeon cards, or any of the Draconic Lord decks. So that is most certainly something to keep in mind when it comes to playing as the Scout. And he most certainly doesn't have anything that benefits his stats in the early go. Unlike the Ancient Oak, who has his growth tokens, which can enable him to grow in that regard. And if the Totem Warrior is able to kill enough enemies, then he is able to gain some stats and that sort of thing. Whereas the Scout doesn't really have any early game advantages when it comes to being able to either specialize in battle or psychic combat. So that is definitely something to take into consideration when it comes to playing as the Scout. But overall, this encompasses the Scout. I'll see you guys in the next character we will be covering with the last character inside of the Woodland Expansion.